Hey, how's it going, everybody? Another toy to show you guys from Big Mike's Toy Reunion here in Kingman. Anyways, this is my first vintage Star Trek item, or I don't feel that old yet, so vintage ish. I still feel immature, so vintage ish. It's not vintage yet, it's ish. Otherwise, uh, it's a Star Trek Super Phaser 2 target game. Which, uh, on the date, the box says 76, but the toy itself says 75, so whatever. Old enough. And there's something to where the box <laughs> shows damage from the years this thing's been sitting around, but the toy inside is like friggin' new. And it appears to be a well-built toy. And it works beautifully. Which, on that, on the beautifully part... This toy likes to be played with in a dimly lit room, as it has to do with light refraction. It's where you're flashing a bright light, and then the target refracts the light back to the toy to make it beep or whatever, so you know you hit target. So anyways, front of the box. Some really cool artwork there. And this is made by Migo. Made a lot of Star Trek toys back then, which uh, on the toys that it shows on the box, I'm definitely going to look them up and see if they exist. You never know sometimes to where they could add prototype images on it on stuff that isn't out yet. There's what the phaser looks like. It is chunky. <laughs> definitely chunky. Little handle for kid for the uh, grip. And then this massive size phaser, so it's a little bit out of proportion, but it's cool. And uh, I did not get the instructions with it. That's the only thing missing, but uh, for anybody that finds one, little red dial there that's got an arrow on it to where it's either pointing forward, as in towards the barrel of the phaser, or it's pointing to the left. Anyways, I noticed when you turn it to the left, it gives you one more shot, and then after that, nothing. So it's kind of like an on-off switch. Otherwise, when you got to point forward, as long as you get it in momentum, which I found out, you got to get it in momentum. Don't just like a freaking spaz. But it was just bang, 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 and it keep flashing. As a, it works the light bulb like a camera flash. So it just flashes at the target. And then there's a sensor below that that catches the refracted light coming back from the target. Which, after looking at the target, I don't see why you could make more of them real easy with just bicycle reflectors. That's basically what it is. It's like a bicycle reflector. So I'm sure you can just make up your own and just have several of them as you only get the one target with this. Are some of the supposed figures you can get. I say, man, I really like the artwork. It's just got that cool 70s type artwork where it's just very well done. Worbs. Some of the toys you can get. That thing on top is supposed to be a tribble, either that or it's a spoiled piece of olive loaf. <laughs> it just it doesn't look like the dribbles from the show. I think that a lot of these toys, man, came out and they didn't know too much about the series. I don't know, man. I noticed that with Star Wars toys on the early ones when they didn't know the names of the characters too well, so they'd mispronounce them. Or maybe the character on the box didn't quite look like the one in the movie. But yeah, either a spoiled olive loaf or possibly a rotten baked potato, man. It's just not that cute little round fuzzy thing or... Some kind of a mutant slug. And then the next things. Got a tricorder. Little model of the uh, USS Enterprise, like the deck. And then Command Communications Council. Communicators. Phaser Battle Game. That looks pretty cool. And then Mission to Gamma 5. I'm going to look up all these and see if they exist. They just look freaking cool. And then on the bottom here, shows like a kid standing in the dark holding it. It says aim phaser at target reflector badge. Fire you missed ready. 
Fire again, it's a hit, and the badge activates the sonic buzzer device. And Nope, kitty all gone, can't make eyes bug out again. <laughs> she does not like it, man. <laughs> it's a loud chirping noise when you hit the target right. So my cat is just be like, like, am I gonna die? I'm gonna die. <laughs> just full on, just Brett is just. <laughs> so you enjoy it around your pets. Gotta keep them on their toes, paws, whatever. Murder mitts. So anyways, on the target here, it does have a belt clip. This is from the 70s. I do not recommend putting this on your belt now, as it's just a plastic clip. I could see it snapping real easy. This one feels pretty solid, but don't want to count on it. And uh, the kind of plastic they used for the target backing, it's about the same stuff you'd have on like a yard sale sign that's plastic. And then they just got a picture on it, and then... I can say, man, it looks like a bicycle reflector. See, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to make more of these. Easy enough to find the reflectors. In fact, there's something. <laughs> Ride your bike back and forth if you got reflectors on it and see if somebody can shoot one of the reflectors. That would test out the accuracy of this thing. Just got to do it while the sun's going down because it likes to be in a dark area. Otherwise, here it be in all of its glory. It's really, really minty condition, man. Like it never got played with. Or very little. And... I was trying to figure out what this is. Bottom. It's like a metal disc and then something above that. I think that's the little mechanism that chirps. So instead of a speaker, it's got something in there that just chirps, vibrates, whatever. So I'm tempted to open it up. It's only got four screws on the side of it here. This piece, so you can replace the light bulb if needed, just pulls off. Looks like it's pretty simple to take apart. I like to see what makes it tick. And then, top part there, which would be the part that detaches in the TV series to use as another weapon. That's your battery compartment. So they got this nice nub on here. Just pull back on just a little bit. And it takes two AA and then a 9 volt battery which he was nice enough to supply. Also, just so somebody doesn't force it, see it's got the little hooky thing on the end of it. First thing that pops in your brain when you're putting this back on is to push this all the way up so that little thing disappears. No, you just push it up a little bit. It's got some little hooks on the sides here that just catch under a ridge, and then it stays in place. And then on top of it, it says Paramount Pictures Corporation, 1975, made in Taiwan, or ROC, exclusively for Mega Corporation, New York, New York, and 110, pet penned. Here's a little red switch I was talking about. Right now I got it aimed forward. As you can see, I keep pushing the trigger, it lights up. And if I turn it to the left there, while it's pointed upwards, it should just be one more flash and then nothing. See, now it's not going to do anything. So I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be like an on off switch. I have no idea how much juice it takes to do the light bulb. But they'll do that too. This just doesn't unscrew, it just fits on snug. Just pull it forward. It's got the usual flashlight type housing in there. And then there is your light bulb that you can just pull out. It doesn't screw in. Till I go to a store to look at some, it looks like just a standard light bulb 
probably the reason why it's still good and hasn't burned out is because it just flashes at the one time. It doesn't stay on. And now that I got a light overhead, I can see some of the guts. See a little circuit board in there. It's interesting how they did it. Definitely interesting. I don't know. I may not take it apart. There's some stuff in there that looks like it could fall out and it would be a bitch to get it back in place, especially on where the light bulbs housed here. I almost see some kind of a weight or something. I need to get a flashlight and shine inside of it, but you can see a lot of the guts when you take off the uh, cap here. Otherwise, let's see. Try to get where I can go here. Yeah, it really likes to be in the shade here. That's what it sounds like when you hit. Otherwise, I say. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sometimes you get lucky, even though I got a light overhead. It's got to be just enough refracting back from the reflector to go into this little piece here that I cannot figure out what that is. Couldn't see it inside, so maybe I can see it once I shine something in there. Otherwise, man, really cool. Oh. And speaking of really cool, sorry about the noise, gotta turn this back on, man. I've been getting monsoons, but it's like it seems to rain around us. It's just making it really hot and humid. Typical freaking Arizona weather. So anyways, man, this is the kind of stuff that makes that toy store cool. This is the kind of stuff he gets. And, uh, he had some other Star Trek stuff there that was pretty cool. He had one that, I don't know how old it is, but it had an action figure of uh, Spock, where it's in one of the um, transporters. So that toy, I didn't look at it, but it's cool, and it's in really good shape. He just doesn't have it boxed. It's got like some stuff like this that's definitely valuable. He keeps in display cabinets, so you got to open it up to look at it. It's got some of the Star Wars characters in there, like he's got. I don't know if they're for sale or not. They've even got the custom-made stands for them or whatever, where he's got a 12-inch Princess Leia and a 12-inch Luke Skywalker. And I think the one that he does have listed is Boa Fett, but it doesn't have his jetpack. But all of the 12-inch ones that uh, General Mills made back in the 70s. I say, man, a lot of box Star Wars stuff. He's got the, um, there's some things I was looking at, but I just don't know, man. <laughs> it, would have, it would have to be where I could find enough stuff to make a trade. He's got, like, the um, bandolier or whatever that uh, Chewbacca has, where this one, you can store so many action figures in anyways. He's got that boxed. And then most of the box stuff seems to be, like, play sets. It's been getting in a lot of them. And then just a lot of loose stuff. Tons of freaking action figures, man. There's the dude that was there when I showed up today that had a bin full of different action figures. I recognized some from my childhood, man. Just oddball stuff. But cool, man. <laughs> so it's like I say, you never know what he's going to have when you go in there. I'm pretty sure it's going to be different stuff every day, depending on what he sets out. And he's just getting more and more words. Kind of look crowded in there, but not bad. He tries to keep it uncrowded, but boy, if he set out everything he's been getting, man, he'd have that place packed. I can tell. So I think some stuff he just keeps in the storeroom and then he just circulates a little bit or whatever. So, anyways, it's again, I don't know when I'm going to have another video up. The uh, place I went to was to go get my massage. I've got chronic muscular pain, so massage helps but sometimes it brings out the pain after getting the massage like the next day or so. So 
I'd like to get on the weekend and see if he gets anything else in. Otherwise, it may not be till next week until I see him again. And with this weather, it's been crazy. Oh, it's, it's not making it good with this monsoon. It's just really humid and it just makes me feel sick. And then just the heat makes me feel sick. I have a hard time dealing with it anymore. So I just haven't been getting out as much. Otherwise, next video, maybe more stuff from him or maybe I'll find something cool at Goodwill now that I got cash and I've sold stuff to him. So good way to make some cash. Have a good one, everybody.